In this video, I will talk about visual and motor stereotypy in children with autism. I will provide you with some characteristics of visual and motor stereotypies plus some general strategies to manage the behavior. Visual and motor stereotypy often refers to a stereotypic or repetitive behaviors. There are common characteristics observed in children with autism spectrum disorder. These behaviors are characterized by repetitive and seemingly purposeless movement or actions. They can manifest in various forms and intensity and their presence can significantly impact a child's daily functioning and social interaction. Visual stereotypy refers to repetitive visual behaviors that children with autism engage in. These behaviors may include staring at certain objects or visual stimulus for prolonged periods of time, repetitive eye movements or repetitive visual scanning of the environment. These behaviors may appear to be self-stimulatory, providing sensory input that the child finds comforting or soothing. For example, staring at a spinny object. A child with autism may repeatedly stare at a spinny top or any other object that exhibits circular motion. They may become fixated on the spinning motion. Watch it for extended period without apparent interest in the object purpose or function. Another example is repetitive eye blinking. Some children with autism may engage in repetitive eye blinking which involves rapid or slow blinking movements that they repeat in a predictable pattern or frequency. Now, let's talk about motor stereotypy. Motor stereotypy refers to repetitive physical movements or action exhibited by children with autism. These movements can be fine motor or gross motor and often lack a clear goal or purpose. For example, hand flopping is common motor stereotypy in children with autism. It involves rapidly and repeatedly opening and closing their hands, often near their face or body. This behavior may occur when the children eat it is excited, anxious, or overstimulated. Another example is rocking back and forth. Rocking back and forth can occur while sitting or standing. The child may sway their body rhythmically, finding comfort in the repetitive motion. Before interfering on any behavior, you will need to find the function of the visual and moral stereotypy based on the underlying function. You will design and prescribe the necessary strategies to manage the behaviors. Here are some general strategies that you could use to manage visual and moral stereotypies. First, visual schedules and social stories. Visual schedules can help provide predictability and structure to a child's day, reducing anxiety and potentially decreasing stereotypical behaviors. Social stories can be used to explain social situations and appropriate behaviors, providing a framework for children to follow. For example, when at home, you can create a visual schedule that will indicate all the activities that the child will complete throughout the day, such as waking up, use the bathroom, getting dressed, 
have breakfast, go for a walk, go to the gymnastic, and so on. Second, sensory integration. This will help the child process sensory information more effectively, reducing the need for self-simulatory behaviors. For example, you can create a sensory choice board and when the child starts to engage in visual or motor stereotypy, you will interrupt the behavior by redirecting the child's attention to the sensory board and ask the child to choose a desired sensory toy or activity. Third, functional communication. For some children, communication difficulties may contribute to the development of stereotypes. For example, if the child is excited during play and wants more of that activity, as a result, starts flapping their hands. Then, you'll interrupt this behavior by redirecting the child's attention to functional communication and asking the child, do you want more? You can present the child with picture communication, AC device, sign language or verbal language. Fourth, manipulate the environment. Create a structured and supportive learning environment that can help reduce stress and anxiety in children with autism. Providing clear expectations and routines can contribute to a sense of security and may decrease stereotypical behaviors. For example, Organize the environment by putting toys in see-through boxes, eliminate distractors and present a clear routine with a visual schedule that includes the activities and the tasks that are expected to be completed throughout the day. Fifth and last, positive reinforcement. Using positive reinforcement techniques such as praise or rewards can encourage appropriate behaviors and decrease the frequency of stereotypical actions. For example, if a child goes and uses a seat and spin toy instead of spinning in circles, acknowledge and deliver verbal praise for the child's functional behavior. Individualized assessment and tailored intervention plan are crucial for the successful management of moral and visual stereotypy. Consulting with a multidisciplinary team, including behavior analysts, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, and medical professionals, is essential to create the most effective and comprehensive intervention plan. I hope this video provided you with some general ideas and strategies that will help you manage stereotypical behavior. If you have any questions, make sure you type them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.